Electricity and natural gas prices continue to rise. Millions of people live in older homes that are drafty and not well insulated. To address these issues, the federal government has expanded its support for local weatherization programs and increased tax incentives to encourage people to make their homes more energy efficient. Perhaps you aren't sure where insulation fits into the weatherization picture and whether there are enough trained contractors to handle the work. Hello and thanks for joining us today. CertainTeed has provided this resource to address these questions and to help you meet increasing demand for energy efficient retrofits. As a corporation, we're committed to helping people reduce the environmental impact of their businesses and homes. Most people know that properly insulated homes are more energy efficient than uninsulated or poorly insulated homes. But one of the most common questions we hear concerns the different types of insulation and which ones are best in terms of both performance and sustainability. Fiberglass insulation has been a green building material since well before the term green became popular. Fiberglass is made from recycled glass and sand, an inexhaustible and rapidly renewable resource. Fiberglass insulation offers many advantages over other types. It's naturally non-combustible, it won't settle, and it won't lose its insulating power or R value over time. We're here today to talk specifically about insulation retrofits. We want those of you improving the energy efficiency of homes all across America to understand how fiberglass insulation can help you achieve your objectives. But first, let's take a quick look at the big picture. Why is there such a renewed interest in weatherization? It goes without saying that people whose homes have been weatherized are more comfortable and pay less for utilities. But it's also important to note the positive impact of widespread weatherization on the environment. Statistics indicate that residential consumption represents about 20% of total U.S. energy usage, with over 40% of that total accounted for by heating and cooling. That's one of the biggest reasons for government support of weatherization programs and for the various tax incentives that encourage people to buy insulation and other products that help reduce energy usage. Even without government funding and incentives, concern for the environment and the exploding interest in green lifestyles ensure that efforts to make housing more energy efficient will continue. This means weatherization agencies will stay busy and the demand for qualified contractors who know how to properly carry out insulation retrofits will remain high. But where exactly does insulation fit into the weatherization process? Many steps can be taken to improve home energy efficiency, but installing more efficient HVAC equipment, cool roof products, and window and door upgrades can be expensive. Simpler, less costly steps such as sealing air leaks and improving insulation levels are more affordable and can make a real difference in a home's energy performance. These simple steps will be the focus of our discussion. Specifically, we're going to address three areas energy audits, air leaks, and insulation retrofits. Certainty understands how important it is to train installers who may not be familiar with weatherization and insulation retrofits. We'll start by providing an overview of the process. The details of installing insulation in retrofit applications will be covered later. Before you can start addressing problems, you have to find out where the problems are. That's why an energy audit is a vital first step in any weatherization project. But what exactly is an energy audit? The organizations that help set standards for building energy efficiency rating systems define several levels of progressively more sophisticated energy audits. The comprehensive audit includes the following. Visual inspection and documentation of energy using and building envelope features. Documentation of equipment types, characteristics, and ages. Documentation of appliance and lighting characteristics. Diagnostic evaluation, which includes blower door test, infrared imaging, and duct blaster test. Any additional necessary performance testing. We're going to focus on the diagnostic evaluation component because it's very important in terms of identifying places where conditioned air is lost and insulation is inadequate. But 
what are blower door tests and duct blaster tests? And what is infrared imaging? A blower door is a powerful fan that is mounted into the frame of an exterior door to pull air out of the house and lower interior air pressure. Drafts that flow in through unsealed cracks and openings due to the pressure difference between the outside and the inside can then be detected with a gauge or smoke pencil. Infrared imaging is used to identify poor thermal performance of a home. By taking a picture of hot and cold spots, the thermal imaging camera can pinpoint problem areas, particularly those that are not well insulated. To determine whether air is leaking from the ducts that transport conditioned air to different rooms in the house, a duct blaster test is the way to go. A small fan is used to pressurize the duct system, and a pressure gauge measures the degree to which the system is compromised by leaks. It's important to seal these leaks, which allow heated and cooled air to escape before it reaches living areas. For further improvements in duct performance, install duct liner or duct wrap. Duct liner is rigid insulation that fits inside the sheet metal, while duct wrap is an insulation blanket that envelops the outside of the duct. These three diagnostic tests are best performed by knowledgeable professionals with the proper equipment. Homeowners should be encouraged to seek out the pros for this type of work. Sealing air leaks, which allow conditioned air to escape and force heating and cooling equipment to work harder, is a crucial step in the weatherization process. We're going to take a look at the primary areas where such leaks can occur and the products that can be used to seal them. There are many excellent training resources on this topic that provide more detailed step-by-step -step instructions. Leaks are often found in the following areas joints, seams and penetrations, openings between window and door assemblies and their respective jams and framing, utility penetrations, walls and ceilings separating a garage from conditioned spaces, attic access openings, site-built windows, doors and skylights, sills and baseboards, drop ceilings or chases adjacent to exterior walls, knee walls, behind tubs and showers on exterior walls, and common walls between dwelling units. A number of products can be used to seal these leaks, including caulk, weather stripping, foam sealant, door sweeps, and electrical receptacle gaskets. Taking care of leaks is obviously a very important step in weatherizing a home. But if you stop there and don't check insulation levels in attics, walls, or other parts of the home, you're only doing part of the job. And so let's talk about insulation and retrofits. Adding insulation to a home can have a dramatic effect on energy usage and thus utility bills. In fact, the Department of Energy estimates that a combination of air sealing and insulation can lower heating and cooling costs by up to 20%. But where in the home should insulation be targeted? And why is it so important? Installing insulation helps reduce energy loss in a number of areas in the house. About 25% of a home's energy can be lost through the attic and roof. However, the attic is the easiest place to add insulation and should be the first area of the home to focus on during a weatherization retrofit. Exterior walls, the area through which approximately 35% of a home's energy is lost, can be upgraded with loose fill fiberglass insulation, blown in from either the inside or outside of the house. Unconditioned ground floor spaces like basements and garages can account for about 15% of a home's energy loss. Adding insulation to unfinished walls and ceilings is simple and effective. Other areas of the home that should be evaluated for insulation levels include crawl spaces, knee walls, cantilevers, and band joists. Evaluating the amount of insulation in the attic is as easy as heading upstairs to take a look. If there is no insulation or not enough, installing it becomes the first major priority after air leaks are sealed. Determining how well exterior walls and other enclosed cavities in the home are insulated is better left to a professional contractor with the right know-how and equipment. We hope this video has helped to clarify the important role insulation plays in the weatherization process. 
CertainTeed offers many resources to weatherization professionals. Check out our website or contact us for more information.